Hello, everyone, and welcome to our talk, Trust the Hamster. That is such a weird title, isn't it? Who came up with that title? Lauren, do you know? Uh, yes, I know, but this guy has left the team for a girl called Irene. Left the team, I see, for a girl. Ah, yeah. Well, anyways, we'll be talking about the bit service today. Um, my name is Peter, this is Norman. Hello. And um, let's get the most important things out first. What is the most important thing? We have a new logo, and it's a hamster, and the hamster says, hello. Um, it's a hamster because the hamster eats your bits and nuts, eats them all, nom, 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 and it keeps them for you until you actually need them again. We also have stickers, so if you want to come, come to us after the talk, we have lots of stickers also at the IBM booth, there is more. Um, yeah, so whenever you see the hamster, you know this is about the bit service. And with that, let's talk about what the bit service actually is and get some recap. Yeah, what, what is the bit service? So the bit service is an official Cloud Foundry um, incubation project. Uh, the functionality is an extraction from the Cloud Controller. Um, we build a Cloud Foundry common API for object stores. And what does it? It does handle bits. So what does it mean? It handles all the packages, the build packs, and the droplets. So build packs or the runtime packages, that is your code. And the droplet is the, rep the container representation uh, for Diego. So why do we, why did we do it? Right? Um, what we want to achieve is separation of concern in two levels. One, one level is the organizational part. We would ship this, the responsibility for the bits handling domain to a separate team. And on the other hand, we want to have this microservice approach that we can, uh, for example, get load out of the load away from the from the cloud controller, um, have independent scalability, get better main, maintainability. And with that, we get a lot of flexibility, hopefully. And yeah, and one, one, thing, one thing more is that we want to also have uh, independent deployments without rolling a cloud controller. That's one thing. And performance improvements. So performance improvements. Uh, Peter, was there already something? There was actually something, yes. So we, this year, we did a re-implementation of the bit service in Golang. And since that, it has become lightning fast. But that wasn't actually the original reason to rewrite the bit service in Go. So let me back off a little bit. Originally, the bit service was written in Ruby. And it was simply because the bit service was an extraction from the cloud controller. So far, cloud controller handled the, uh, all the bits. Now it's bit service. And for that reason, it was written in, in Ruby. And there is nothing wrong with that, actually. It's just that our code base didn't age quite well. So we saw actually several problems. One problem was that we had a lot of code duplication in our code. Another problem is that we noticed that with the framework that we used in Ruby, in this case, the Sinatra framework, it's actually quite difficult to get proper dependency injection, which was kind of annoying. Um, we noticed that our log files were a complete mess. So whenever you would get a bad request or a 404 not found, and you look at the log file to understand what's going on, why, why is it a bad request, you couldn't figure it out. There's, there was a lot of noise in those log files, but they were not very helpful. We also spent a lot of time configuring Nginx, which we use um, as a proxy for the bit service, or which we used as a proxy for the bit service. And that was really a huge time sink. And it might just be that we're not smart enough to understand this config, but it just didn't work very well for us. Another problem that we noticed uh, with Nginx was with monitoring. So we were using StatsD, like most of the projects, but it seemed impossible to get StatsD metrics for, let's say, um, request response times, request sizes, st uh, status codes, and so on, out of the box. Um, and so there wasn't a very easy solution to do that. 
with all of that, of course, you could still fix it in the old code base, but at, at, at that point, we felt like it's marginally more effort to do a rewrite in Golang, and so that's what we did, and it actually came with some really, really nice benefits that we didn't even expect at that point, and that's the performance improvement, so let's talk about those. Yeah, it was really a surprise. So what did we... We did a test where we uh, fired 10 concurrent um, requests against a bit service with a local Blobster backend. And um, we did no special tweaks. We just used the uh, Golang implementation with the Mux library and the uh, Ruby implementation with the Sinatra framework and um, did this, this simple test. So when we look at the counts uh, for GET requests, we are 200 times faster than the Ruby implementation. Sorry for that. And <laughs> for, for put request, it's, uh, it's around uh, 50, 50 times faster. And, with and we just want to emphasize, I mean, this is not a specific Ruby problem, very likely. Yeah. Um, it's probably the combination of Ruby and Sinatra and um, potentially other things, how we do it in the bit yeah. service. But yeah. This is simply what we saw. Yeah, it's, it's as you see, uh, as you saw, this is only what we uh, what we uh, observed on the on the test. So with all the with all this great news, I mean, when is when is this available, Peter? When is this available? In fact, the bit service went GA last week, so now it's available in CF deployment as an ops file. So. It's very easy, easy actually to use the bit service in, um, in Cloud Foundry. That didn't render that well. Sorry for that. But so what you really do is just you do your usual Bosch deploy, specify CF deployment YAML, and then you add two additional ops files. One is the one use bit service, and the second one is config, uh, configure bit service with your desired backend. We support, support all the backends that the cloud controller currently supports. That is S3, GCP, um, web dev, local, OpenStack, and so on. So it's really that simple. Those two add those two lines to your Bosch deploy, and you'll have bit service in your deployment. But I think there was another major mi milestone that we hit this year. Um, Norman, maybe you can tell us more about those. Yes, I can, for sure. The big milestone is we have uh, running the bit service also in the IBM Cloud Public. So um, with this, we get this cool thing, uh, metrics. So let me phrase here the comparison uh, table a bit. We know that Cloud Controller uh, is not, a co not comparable with bit service, but what we here compare is the bit service uh, the bits handling domain, right? So only this is the comparison, not anything else. So let me let me let me explain it. So what is if you have the cloud controller, he handles the bits for you, right? So if you enable the bit service, nothing changed. It still handles bits. But what you get for free is this kind of matrix, which is uh, good good to know. Um, so you get response times, you get response size, and my personal favorite response status codes. Uh, okay, no, no, it's oh, okay. okay. Uh, sorry. No, oh, yeah. sorry, so no, uh, sorry, that was a joke, and that is how it looks like in our production <laughs> system. <laughs> and so, um, just to add to this, I mean, this has real uh, value in production systems, because what we saw, at least in Bluemix, is when it's unclear uh, if there are issues, like your, your system degrades in performance, um, for example, a cloud controller returns slow responses, and you have no idea where it comes from, just, knowing, just from that separation, um, knowing that it's actually blob star handling which is slow and which, is now, which you can now see from the bit service, actually uh, makes it pretty clear where it comes from, whereas if those metrics are actually fine, then you know it's something specific to cloud controller. So we get a lot more transparency here when it comes to bits handling versus other API calls against the cloud controller. Yes, indeed. All right. <laughs> so with that, I have another secret to share, actually, Norman. Oh, so secrets. Secrets are good. 
We are getting married. Get, what? Getting married? What? Yeah, we're getting married. We, the bit service. What? Yes. What? Huh? What? Well, we're. At least we got engaged. Let's let's say we got engaged. We got engaged with Irene, or I, sh I should say Irene, like we learned uh, yesterday. So who knows what Irene is? Well, who saw the talk yesterday? Me too. Yeah. Who saw the t uh, who saw the talk yesterday? Oh, okay. Oh. You should watch them definitely right. on YouTube. So, so only I'll, that, I'll that give it. you Irene in a nutshell. It's Cloud Foundry coming together with Kubernetes. And the demonstration that Jules gave yesterday was pretty impressive. So you could see how you can do your CF push and your app actually gets run in Kubernetes. But there is one small thing missing, actually, in that whole chain, and um, it's an OCI image registry. And the bit service can actually fill that gap, because the bit service is already the master of droplets, and an image for Kubernetes is basically just your root FS plus a droplet on top of that. That's more or less your image. And so the bit service is actually the perfect spot to provide such an image. And with that, um, the way it looks like when, when you actually um, push an app looks like this. Cloud Controller goes ahead and says, hey, stager, can you stage this app for me? And then the stager says, OK. Hey, bit service, I've just built this droplet from a package. Can you store it for me? And the bit service says, sure, done. And then the cloud controller talks to Irene and says, hey, Irene, staging is done. Can you schedule a container for me? And then I, Irene says, sure. I'll ask my friend Kubernetes uh, to do it. And then it says, hey, Kubernetes, can you schedule a container for me? You can get the image from bit service. Then uh, Kubernetes just goes ahead and said, sure th says, sure thing, hey, bit service, I need an OCI image um, from the droplet you stored earlier. And then the bit service just says, here you go. So that's the basic flow, how it works between um, cloud controllers, stage or bit service, Irene and Kubernetes. And um, with that, we'll show a quick demo of what this uh, looks like. We actually wrote a little um, proof of concept so it's not done yet, but the proof of concept already works. So um, how do I do this? Like this. Yeah, delete it. Okay. And I'm really sorry for the uh, for the bad rendering here. We couldn't figure out what the problem was here. All right. So what I have here is a couple of windows. On the top right. I have our usual CF apps in a watch command, so we see uh, all the apps that are currently running in our uh, Cloud Foundry. Um, right below that, I have all the Kubernetes pods that are running, uh, which, which were started by Irene, so that's in the Irene namespace. And then um, on the bottom right, I'll show the events that Kubernetes will show us which happen in Irene. So we'll just watch that. Actually, let me clear that and do it again. Same here. Um, the focus, yeah, it, it all, yeah. I'm really sorry for that. I, I don't know how. I'll, OK, let's do the following. We'll just create another small window so we'll make them all gray. So now you can read them at least as long as they're not focused. So we also open a log file um, for the bit service. And with that, we, I'm here in Dora. And I'll do your typical CF push. And we'll run that. So now what you see is just the normal staging that's happening. So you can already see that it, it created the app um, in the cloud controller on the top right. 
it's, sorry, let me show you here a little more. So here you can see the whole build pack thing and then um, staging it. Yeah. Now it's installing all the uh, Ruby gems. And as soon as the staging is done, we should see some interaction on the top left, oh, sorry, um, the bottom left and the bottom right. So now you can see it um, here. Kubernetes just told that us that it pulled the image right here from something that is called registry.someip.nipio. And this is actually just the bit service running there and serving the OCI image to Kubernetes. And it's done. So now we can curl Dora. Uh, we can see that Dora is responding. And that's it. That's bit service working together with Irini. Okay. And of course, just like we did with Kubernetes, any scheduler that supports OCI images like Mesos, um, Knative, obviously, um, Docker Swarm, it will just work with bit service as an OCI image, uh, image registry. So, so everything what works with Docker pull should be work with us. Exactly. All right. And with that, we have office, hour this af office hours this afternoon at 2.50 till 3.20. So please come. As I said, we'll have more stickers. We'll have time to answer questions. Um, yeah, that's it. That's we'll it. wrap up. Yeah, can you nice. start again? Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. We have the, the last slide. Yeah. OK, yeah, the awesome stuff to share. Really, really, really cool. Um, but let me say, this, this, this stuff, uh, we did it not alone. There's lots of people involved. Um, there are people which uh, bootstrapped this project. They are named here. There was Stefan Ulick, Simon Moser, Steve Witzel, Thiago Scolari, and Mark Chunk. And the current team setup is Peter Götz, Tobias Zipfel, and myself, Norman. And we are still not at the end. We are happy to receive contribution feedback from you. Also, if you want to work with us, you can join the team. Um, talk to us on Slack. That's the, the Slack channel, BitService. And yeah, I would say that's it. BitService is ready for use. So thank you. Use it. Thank you. And yes, we have enough time for questions. That's right. Oh, there's one in the ah. far away. <laughs> Thanks, thanks a lot for, for this presentation and the demo. I was wondering now that um, the droplet can be saved as OCI image. Um, is there a way that the user could um, then refund that um, in their Docker support in Cloud Foundry as to get a reproducible um, parity from non prod to prod? Uh, Currently, when using this pack, they, they had to download the droplet and then use the binary build pack to run that again. Um, if there are um, thoughts with the the, um, uh, the Digo team and um, the Capi team to make a consistent experience that a user can do a safe push, get the droplet saved into bit service, and then reference this image on the next CF push using um, uh, Docker support. Um, Would you sorry. answer? No. Or should I? Okay. So uh, the question was, is this um, OCI image, what you get from uh, bit service, uh, has this the same state like the current droplet in, in, uh, in, in what, what Jago represent? Is that the question? Um, can I use this OCI image as a source for doing my safe push with the minus docker option? Ah, OK. Ah, OK. Um, Good but, question. Yeah. <laughs> Since, so we're very early in this process. I don't see why it would not work. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I'm not sure yet if, if, we'll make, uh, if we'll expose this image to 
to, uh, to clients. Um, but it's, it's certainly possible. I wouldn't say, yeah, it, I think it's possible. I think we'll, we'll need to have more conversations how we want to do this, but it might be possible. Thank you. Any more questions? Ah, Stefan. <laughs> right at the other <laughs> side of the room. <laughs> People in the back, prepare your next question. <laughs> yeah, the fun run was not enough for you, right? You yeah, run. that's what I just thought. I one question, can you uh, elaborate a little bit about the scaling? So should I have one uh, bit service VM per 10 API nodes or something like that? So um, we don't have good experience with that yet. Um, the way we run it currently in IBM is that it's actually co-located on the API VMs. So it's co-located with Cloud Controller. And that was, uh, that's actually also, for now, our long-term plan, because the feedback that we got from the Relent team is they, they want to reduce uh, VM footprint as much as possible. Right now, when you use CF deployment, it'll create a separate BITS VM. Um, but the plan is to merge that back into the API VM. And this is also our setup in, uh, in IBM currently. That being said, my hunch is that we can do with much less bit service VMs than cloud controllers. So um, for now, where it's still a separate VM, yeah, I, I think like you can probably go with maybe just three, depending on how big your environment is, obviously. But I think you can go with much less than Cloud Controller, because it's, there is, as we showed, the performance is extremely good. And also, for um, if it's a non-local blob store, we just provide a redirect on all GET requests. And so it's served from S3, for example, anyways. Um, yeah, But long term, it will we'll merge it back into the API VM. That at least is the current plan. A second? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Shall I move back first? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I like the metric stuff, so I, I think it definitely helps for troubleshooting. And we had our experience also there. Uh, question in the same direction: Do we also have tracing of the requests that go to the backend, like to be it Swift, S3, whatever? So it, it, at least at the moment, it's not really transparent if something goes wrong in uh, this place. So. Yeah. Um, we don't. So for uh, S3, for example, we have kind of a low-level logging, something that is actually provided by the AWS um, Golang SDK. And when you enable that, you get like the specific request that was made against the backend. For OpenStack, we don't have something like this at this point, because if I remember correctly, there, there wasn't like something out of the box to use. If there is actually, um, then we'd be happy to integrate that because it's super helpful. Um, but yeah, so right now it's we have this kind of low-level tracing only in S3, but we'd be happy to add, add it. Yeah. Any more questions? If not, I would have one. But like uh, you, you showed how to enable the bit service in via Bosch, essentially, and, and the ops file. W what if I already have my blob store set up, cloud controller set up, et cetera, et cetera? Can I just add that line and assume that like all the blobs continue you, to exist? You can just add it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. all compatible. And the nice thing is, even if something did go wrong, you, you can just remove those ops files and deploy again. In fact, um, there is a little flag in the cloud controller, bit service enabled, true or false. You can just set this to false. That will mean the bit service is still there, running, but it's not being used anymore. But we have 100% um, compatibility between cloud controller and bit service. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Any last questions? If not, thank you very much. No questions. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.